there is only one man the opposition will accept. Why have I been forced to send for Churchill? It was floated by me to play Winston Churchill, and my initial reaction was, I laughed my leg off. <laughs> someone had said, we want you to play Stan Laurel or even have a crack at Hitler. You know, I think I could probably, I think I could give it, give it a go, you know. You have an enormous task ahead of you. I only hope it's not too late. It wasn't the psychological or the intellectual challenge. It was just the physical. Gary is a shapeshifter, and certainly what was required for this movie was a, a transformative performance. <clears throat> it, it will inspire them. We both felt that we wanted to get behind the icon of Winston um, and, and find the man. So I went to sort of books and documentary footage and started to sort of build him from the first brick up. I speak to you for the first time as Prime Minister. Churchill's voice, it's a voice we're very familiar with. You're familiar with it in, the, in that old recording kind of a way, but nonetheless, you are. Conquer, we must. As conquer, we shall. I had to convince myself that I could do it, and then I took one of the speeches and I started to, almost like a sort of teaser trailer, I started to experiment. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. Gary would send me recordings of himself doing those speeches, and it was very weird because it was... It was like listening to Churchill. I mean, there he was. What is our aim? I can answer in one word, victory. Gary is an actor that just transforms in every role. He's to the point where he's unrecognizable. Come on, telegram. There are things that are very specific and iconic. The cigar, the watch chain, the ring, the spectacles, the hats. Look, this is the closest I'll ever get to being in a room with Churchill, and it's pretty good. Churchill is someone who we have a very clear, um, almost caricature idea of in our minds. He was a very, very brilliant man with a lot of much, uh, of quite complicated things going on inside him. Cicero! He was sort of naughty and cherubic, a twinkle in his eye. Oh, you beast! <laughs> <laughs> I had such fun finding the man. Was I comprehensible? Gary doesn't look like Winston Churchill at all, and the proportion is totally different. It took a lot of time finding the right look that at the same time didn't hide Gary too much, you know. Um, we had to be able to see the performance. Obviously. We are in a dangerous situation. Kazoo could go a long way to giving us Gary's eyes and mouth and expression a real performance, but have the face of Winston Churchill. It's very surreal turning up in the morning and seeing Winston Churchill. I couldn't imagine the transformation would be that extraordinary. I mean, it, it, it's sort of a shock every time. And to be honest, I completely forgot that Gary was wearing any prosthetic makeup at all when we were shooting. You know, it, it became so real. In fact, we even fooled one of the experts. One of the historians saw the pictures of Gary Oldman as Churchill on the wall and said, oh, those are interesting. Where did you find those? And we said, it's the actor. <laughs> He's got all the mannerisms and the movements and everything, all the gestures right. He's really taken over the persona. Gary more than delivered on this movie. He blew my mind on a very regular basis. It was a real privilege being Winston Churchill. There's no one like him. Action! What goes on down here? Well, that's need to know, and you don't. A war cabinet has been formed of five members. Darkest Hour is a movie about the first month of Winston Churchill's time as Prime Minister in 1940. We are in the preliminary stage of one of the greatest battles in history. It is only five weeks of Churchill's life. Five very, very significant, crucial weeks in our history, in our civilization.
First, we must rouse our old friends to an heroic resistance. Winston had written three of the greatest speeches ever written within a four-week period of each other. So that begged the question, what was the context that motivated this outpouring of brilliance? Conquer, we must. As conquer, we shall. Well done, sir. The opportunity to work with Gary was also a big draw. I'm uh, uh, telephoning about your uh, Navy ships. There are those jobs where you just get that excitement back that you remember why you wanted to do it in the first place. You've wanted this your entire adult life. No, since the nursery. Gary is a great collaborator, and it was interesting for both of us to discover who Winston really was and try and bring that to an audience. You might even rise up and, and, and tear me down when I for one moment to contemplate parley or surrender. Most of the characters who appear in the film actually existed in real life. Clemmy was an extraordinary woman. She had very strong ideas about politics and about um, what should be done in the world and how things should be run. If the king does ask you to become prime minister, we don't know that for sure. I don't want you to be disliked. <laughs> More than I already am. Kristen and I had a really good chemistry. I think we really hit it off. Who should show up? Pig. I think her Clementine is the best I've ever seen. I think you were nervous and he has a knack for drawing out the very worst and those who are trying to help him the most. No, no, it's not, it's not him, it's me. Elizabeth Layton, his secretary, a lot of the story is told through her point of view. Yeah, I think in a way she's meant to be the eyes of the audience, the kind of fresh eyes and kind of the everyman. Yes, sir, let's try keep it. I'm not allowed in the map room. Well, you are now. Lily is really impressive. She brings forensic study of detail and dedication. Okay, check that. She types on an old-fashioned, clunky typewriter like she's a pro. I received His Majesty's commission to form a new administration. The King is not thrilled that Churchill's going to take power. Not thrilled at all. Winston lacks judgment. From the beginning, I knew I wanted Ben to play this role. How are you for Mondays? Four o'clock? I nap at four. He's an extraordinary talent. He has this wild energy. And then you say action and suddenly everything goes zzzz, and focuses into this really intense point of concentration. Well, that was quite easy. Yes, it was. What we wanted is for when Churchill walks into a room that you know exactly who he is. Jacqueline Duran manages to do that proportion and the spirit of the person better than anyone I know. A lot of things were made um, in places where Churchill's clothes were made, but then all of those things had to be adjusted to suit Gary and create the right proportion, and that's quite hard. There's many ways of looking at a period, and you can pull out any number of images from a period and decide that it looked any number of different ways. London in May 1940 didn't look much like it does now. It was a lot dirtier. So we spent some time shooting up in Yorkshire and our Downing Street location was up there and our interior palace was up there. So we were allowed to kind of create that very grubby, very kind of saggy, very down at heel quality that the whole film hopefully has. I think about 50% of the movie takes place in the war rooms. What department's this? It was like a maze down in those war rooms. We had two weeks just locked down there for it felt a bit like what it might have done. <laughs> a bit stir crazy. When you stepped on that huge set, you were unmistakably in another world. We wanted this kind of claustrophobic atmosphere, this kind of intense pressure on these people. Europe is still! Europe is lost! This room in particular actually is identical, it's the same scale. The way that they've got the, the brickwork and the uh, air supply and even the girders and things, you know, it's so realistic and it's so like the original, it's just unbelievable. And the attention to detail, even the pins in the map are in the right place. I mean, they must have just gone to the war rooms and taken thousands of photographs. <laughs> Parliament said it was possible for us to shoot in the real House of Commons, except no one was allowed to sit on any seats. I think only MPs' bums are allowed on the benches of the Commons. Um, so we had to build our own. We shall fight in the hills. 
we shall never surrender! There's nothing like having 450 extras in a set that's been built exactly almost one-to-one -one of the House of Commons in 1940, and then have Gary Oldman walk on as Winston Churchill and give that great speech. By sea, land, and air, with all our might, it's wonderful to see him blend in. You would not know that there is Gary Oldman uh, full of prosthetics and in lots of costume. And it really is a spine-tingling moment. And people would pay a fortune to go and see that in a the theatre, and there you are, standing there, you know, two foot away from him, just listening to this guy. The new world, with all its power and might. I wanted to say those words. It's such a remarkable moment. Steps forth to the rescue and the liberation of the old! Joe and I would discuss things. It was lovely to be working with someone who had such a vision for the film that I thought was unique. He's open to all sorts of ideas. He's not completely fixed on one way or another. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. Joe is often a man of surprises. If you think something is going to be one way, he will give you a left turn and it goes another way. And the surprises work very well. He brings a real sense of intimacy and humanity and personal relationships between the characters. He tells stories, paints pictures so beautifully. Being given the opportunity to play Winston Churchill, it's like Christmas. You come in every day and you go, I can't believe I'm so lucky, I'm so fortunate to be doing this.